you so much. I'll, I'll start from where my colleagues left. Uh, I'll just introduce CALRO is a Kenya Agricultural and Livestock Research Organization working towards uh, ensuring that the country has the food security by introducing technologies, by bringing in new innovations and uh, good agricultural practices towards uh, food security in the country. Uh, CALRO works under the Ministry of Agriculture uh, and they work closely with other partners to ensure that research is actually, the research mandate is achieved in the country. Uh, in Kenya uh, or in CALRO, the reason why we do communications or the reason why we do, we do engage media, because uh, most of the activities that corporate communication is doing is actually PR, one, is, one of them is PR, public relations. The second one is media engagement. The third one is ensuring that the, the information that comes from the science is also shared out to the public and ensure that there is an adoption. Uh, in, in CALRO, we use several channels to communicate, and one of them is media. We use several media to communicate. And uh, in my studies, when I was doing my PhD, I found out that the most used media for the purpose of uh, technology adoption in the country is the vernacular stations and the community radios. Those are the ones which are leading in the country when it comes to adoption of uh, technologies that comes from agricultural research organizations. And uh, the least actually was social media. Very few people were listening to the, uh, to the social media. They used to go to the social media. Mainstream is another media which they usually listen to and most Mostly is the radios. Uh, most of our farmers in the country listen to the radios, and including even some of our policy makers, they listen to the radios. And a very few population go to the TV and uh, the other forms of uh, communications. Now, uh, in Kenya or in Cairo, why are we communicating? There are several issues that makes us communicate, and uh, among them are the issues, and especially when it comes to biotech, are the issues of uh, informing the public, that is one. Two, is because we are facing challenges in Kenya in adopting the te technologies, despite that there is a lot of research which has taken place in the, in the area of biotechnology. Uh, in Kenya, there are issues which are coming up, including court cases stopping us from moving. We could do research, yes, we have around uh, several technologies which are only in the pipeline. One of them which has been approved is the BT uh, cotton, which is already in the market. Two is the BT maize, which is in the pipeline, but it has the challenges of court cases. And uh, the third one is, uh, and the others, I'm saying those ones because they are major concern now when it comes to communicating of uh, biotech in the country. It could have been very easy for us just to con communicate normally. But it has forced us to change our strategy of the way we are communicating to ensure that the technologies does not receive resistance in the country. In the country. And uh, currently, in every project that comes under biotech, we ensure that it has a component of uh, advocacy and outreach. And we hand on every project uniquely. Because we have found out that uh, in Kenya, because of the issues that are going on in the country, it has different challenges. For example, the maize uh, issue in Kenya, some is lying between political and also it is food. So you have to do a strategy which will favor your communication for adoption in the country. The reason why BT cotton was approved easily in the country after doing a number of communication, after doing a lot of advocacy, is because they thought that it was not, there is no food component. Unfortunately, uh, BT cotton can be consumed through the other pie products. Maize has become a bit of a challenge because also it has some policy, it has some political interest, and also it has some trade interest. It has so many issues. The reason why Sometimes also we find ourselves doing a lot of vigorous uh, um, strategies towards advocacy and feasibility 
is because also of the, you know, there is high chances that uh, where we are going in the country is we are going to face a lot of changes when it comes to climate issues. We have to communicate and tell the public about the climate issues that are, we are going to face going forward. The population is going very high, growing very high in the country, and the land is not increasing. How are we going to meet the expectation of the country by feeding them with the land that is so little? We have to reinvent other ways of ensuring there is high production in food so that we don't lack. And that is why communication is a very, very important issue in our country. When it comes to CALRO also, how are we going to, how do we conduct our communication and advocacy? We engage partners, several of them, including uh, AISA, including uh, AATF, international partners and local partners. And we have done a lot of uh, capacity building when it comes to media engagement and also uh, scientists, ensuring that our scientists write stories, also working closely with the media, writing opinion piece, ensuring that when they meet with the media, what would be the first thing to be done? And also ensuring that they use the smallest opportunity time to tell about their story, which can impact uh, a, a policymaker or even working with other international partners to ensure that it meets the expectations when it comes to donor funding. Because when we are communicating, we are not only communicating for adoption. We also want funds to continue to communicate, to continue building our research in the country. So any opportunity that they are given as scientists, how are they able to communicate without just doing science the way they have been doing, but be able to tell the public or to tell individual who is very young or an old mama who is in the village to be able to be convinced that whatever you are doing is going to change their lives. When it comes to media engagement, I want to speak because uh, I know what our scientist has been talking. Eh? You know me, I'm starting between the media and also I'm with the scientist. And you know when it comes to scientists, they'll tell you the way it is. Florida, you know you are taking us to where we really, we are not comfortable. Media is not their comfortable zone. It is good to say that. But how I've been as Corporate communications, because when it comes to corporate communication, you know, you don't only, you also know that uh, you cannot tell the story just like my colleagues. I would have asked questions more and more and more. But how do you make them comfortable? It is assuring them that media is not there to write negative story about what they are giving. It is building trust. It is bringing them together to know who is in that space who can write for me a story of what I want to sell it out. Our scientists cannot engage just like that because previously you find that the scientists could have spoken to media at any time. But we found out also as corporate communication, when you are not, when you are away, our scientists, the weak point of human comes in and they'll want to tell everything. And you know the media will write everything. And on the other side, the policymaker or the institute or the government entities are not ready yet for whatever the scientist is doing. For example, a scientist can come here and say, we are going to avail for you uh, maize in the next three, BT maize, let's use BT maize, in the next three months. On the other side, the policy issue have not been sorted out. Regulators have not agreed on how it is going to run. For according to scientists, it might be a very short uh, duration, but it has several issues to be undertaken so that you reach there. And here, you have told a scientist that we are going to avail for you this uh, technology in the next few months. You have already created in the minds of farmers that you have the product in the country. And sometimes you might not be having that product ready to be consumed or to be adopted or to be bought if it is a seed. It brings challenges and it compromises the organizational image and that is why the PR comes in. We don't use PR for the sake of using the PR the normal way we are using. We are using it because sometimes the scientists can go ahead before the systems are ready. And that is where we, we will, not, will not hesitate and ensure that our scientists give out the right information, working together with the media, working together with the PR team, and also working together with the policymakers so that we don't 
blow something which is not existing. You see, and sometimes it ensures, you know, it creates the trust word, the trust. We shall always repeat, the trust is in the media, the trust also is in the scientists. They want trust, and also the policymakers. Let them get prepared and know that scientists are preparing this particular product and it will be ready at this time. Let us not trust the researchers so that they can just speak. You know, the, the, the media will always want to blow it out and make it big. You see, I'm sorry to use that word, but for the scientists, yes, we shall be excited and say there is, we are going to have a solution for this kind of thing, but let it, let it be cooked slowly, slowly and, and effectively. You see, that just going out to blow it out, it loses the meaning. And at the end of the day, you compromise the trust of the institution. Next time we want to bring a new technology, nobody will trust us. So we have to play our games, balance, and be considerate of every institution across the board. Now, I don't know where I was. I don't know what else. <laughs> you have one more minute. I have one more minute. Dr. Maritim. Yes. <laughs> That is where we are in, in, uh, in Kenya again. What um, I've been told to say about the I I issues that are going on in, the, in, in, in Calro. Calro, there's a uh, web we have found out. Build your trust within. When we say build your trust within, the people who will champion about your feasibility of your technology is somebody who knows you internally. We have found out the, 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 the scientists who kill other scientists when it comes to technology or sharing, or they criticize the other scientists are the fellow scientists. You come to me from the media, you know there are two scientists here. There is a scientist from Cambridge, there is a scientist from Calro. And both of them are almost working on similar issues because sometimes we do also sharing information. We do share a lot of research with uh, Cambridge because of the food and nutrition issues. And uh, a Calro researcher or university, for example, you uh, media go to university and he finds that there is this research. Uh, you go and ask uh, somebody in university about uh, this technology and wanted to know more about it. You know the other scientists will criticize the other scientists just because he's not in that field. Yeah. And the media you would have written whatever is happening on the other side without knowing what is happening on the other side. So as media team, I'll appeal. As you write your stories also, it is good to consider all sides of the ball so that you don't, you don't become focused on one or on one side. And researchers share your research with the other scientists. Give them forum, just like the way we are giving ourselves forum for scientists to communicate us. Also, scientists to scientists is very important because some technologies are actually killed by the scientist, your fellow scientists. It might not be the media, per se. It is your fellow scientist. But when you come together and speak to each other, as you map your stakeholders, let the other scientists be part of the other stakeholders that you want to engage. So that you are, you are not leaving them out. You are running with them. I think I'll finish there. In case of anything, I'll also be available for any questions. Thank you.